I, this is like a black belt ninja. I am so excited to uh, interview uh, our next interviewer, uh, interviewee. So she's written 30 papers. She has like 20 to 30 patents. Uh, she has three degrees uh, from MIT. She was course 6.1. Um, and, um, and she's just uh, awesome. Um, so a friend of mine said that AI is big. And I like to call AI assistant intelligence. And people know that uh, AI is coming and it's going to impact uh, our, our world. Uh, but the friend of mine said, I think nano is going to be bigger than AI. How many of you don't even know what I mean when I say nano? Not clear, hasn't gotten a memo. The idea of nano and, and the science implications just haven't, um, the, the memo hasn't been sent around. The implications for, for everyday people you know, just don't know. And here, sitting next to me, is one of the leaders in the nano space. So we're going to explore, but we're going to, you know, go, uh, go, go small. Um, can you introduce yourself and just say a little bit about yourself? And she's a CEO, and she raised $10 million for a prior company, but this one she's bootstrapping, and uh, it's, gonna, it's saving lives. Uh, but yeah, so tell them who you are. So I'm Marcy Black. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Advanced Silicon Group. And Advanced Silicon Group is commercializing silicon nanowires, um, which are very uh, thin but long, um, uh, single crystalline material of, of silicon. Silicon's what's used in all electronic, well, most electronics. Um, so we're using these silicon nanowires for many applications, but um, the two main applications that we're focused on are for photovoltaics or solar cells. How many of you have solar panels on your roof? How many of you don't? That'll be more interesting. How many of you don't? Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm disappointed. There's only like yeah. three in that. No, but your technology hasn't um, gone mainstream to make it more practical. Um, so, um, so, so let me get back to that. But the other technology that we're commercializing is uh, biosensors uh, using the nanowires. And I think we're talking about that yeah. in a couple questions. But um, um, so in photovoltaics, um, uh, the technology is known as black silicon, not named after me, but because the silicon's very black. Um, and it actually, uh, now about 90% of the multi-crystalline silicon technology being made uses black silicon. So um, the zipper took seven years to be commercialized. Velcro took about the same amount. If you're wearing a iPhone watch, uh, that has an OL, o, OLED in it. That took about 20 years to commercialize. Um, where are we in making things in you know, the research, you know, you're an engineer, the, the science that you've done in nano, where are we in terms of making it you know, uh, can, can impact our lives? You know, people know the generation that was brought up when the light bulb you know, came around. You know, we have these mobile smartphones. We, we know that the world kind of changed when that, those technologies went mainstream. Uh, as an expert, as a leader, someone uh, who's running a company, betting a farm on it, what, where are we and, and, and you know, how soon to this uh, get some traction? And, and maybe we're already there. Yeah, so I've been working in Nano for over 20 years. And when I first started in Nano, um, it was really focused on understanding the new material properties. Um, and Nano is really exciting because when we're, as material scientists, when we're designing a uh, um, a material for an application, we're limited to only the elements and the molecules, you know, the elements on the periodic table and those combinations. So uh, nanomaterials is really exciting because it enables you to alter those material properties and optimize them for, for applications. So it opens up a whole new toolbox. So about 20 years ago, when I was uh, starting in this field, it was really focused on understanding how you can change the properties of na using nanomaterials and nanoengineering. Um, now it's really changed, and the focus is still on the science, but there's a lot of focus on how to use these technologies. So maybe what one thing people don't know is that the nano market right now is, and well, actually, my numbers are old. They're 2012, so they're bigger now. 700 million, or billion. Yeah, that's okay. 700 so, billion dollars yeah, a year. Yeah, that's a big, yeah. Uh, so the the 700 billion. So you know what? Actually, tell us when you say nano. So you have a, some hair. W like how many you know nano units are you using when you or how much can a 
you know, the, the head of a hair hold? So roughly about a million nanowires can fit in the head of a hair. Okay. And, and so, um, so you mentioned that it has something to, you know, can, uh, has something to do with solar. What about uh, bio? As we think about, uh, you know, healthcare costs are going up and up and up. Um, you know, is bio, is the bio space, what can you do with nano? You know, la is it a lab on a chip? Is it, it, you know, fantastic voyage in the 1960s, putting things in, inside your body? Um, I know actually the, in 1992, I don't know if you know this, but at Dartmouth and NASA, they created a camera that could see that ended up being the camera in our iPhones uh, because they wanted to create something that could go into outer space or in the body, but it didn't really work out. It's done much better, and it's led to machine learning and computer vision. Um, but w where are we in terms of um, that for, for bio? So there's a lot of nanotech and related to bio, um, and there's so just to name some of the applications, not necessarily that what what I'm working on, yeah. but I know people are using uh, nanomaterials to introduce it into the body, and then they're able to deliver drugs more specifically to the area that needs the drugs. So if someone has a tumor, you can um, locally release the drugs right near the tumor. Um, so instead of doing invasive surgery where you have to recuperate and you may get sicker because of that, you can use nano to, to, to send something within the body. Yeah, some, some people are doing that. Um, other people are using it uh, to help surgeons so they can put fluorescent elements that bind to where the tumors are so that you can see more clearly where, where the surgeon needs to operate. Um, what we're doing is diagnostics. So it's uh, a, for a blood test, you can, um, it's more sensitive because of the higher surface area of, of the nanomaterials. So, so that's a really interesting point that, that may get missed. Can you go into that? Why is, when you go nano, why is there a ratio or surface area um, opportunity there to, to do things that are extraordinary that you just can't do with things you can hold hold in your hand. Yeah, so when, when you go nano, the volume decreases, but the surface area increases. So you're a lot more sensitive to the environment around the nanomaterial. So the material properties depend a lot on what's happening around it. Um, and so that makes it very... Um, well aligned to things like sensors, so you can have higher sensitivity because of that. So go, go into um, detail about what you're doing. You built the team, and you know, you've bootstrapped this venture. What are you What are you trying to do? You said it has to do with diagnostic. You know, walk us through. Uh, what What do you hope to do with uh, nanotechnology? So on the biosensing side. Um, we're focused on developing a biosensor, and one application for this is um, for monitoring the treatment of lung cancer. So when someone is diagnosed with lung cancer, it's obviously not very good. But if they have a particular mutation for which there's a targeted treatment for, the prognosis is actually pretty, pretty encouraging for them. Um, so the patient can undergo the targeted treatment, which attacks the cancer cells and not not the, the healthy cells. Um, the problem comes when during that treatment, the cancer mutates and the treatment is no longer, the, the, the cancer is no longer responsive to the treatment. Um, and the doctors don't usually know that that mutation has occurred until after the, the whole treatment period when the patient's health continues to deteriorate. So what we are developing is a way to offer the doctors a way to measure throughout the treatment period whether that treatment is working, and if not, dynamically alter it. Yeah. So the fact that we can't see nano um, with our eye, you know, does that make it hard for people to comprehend it? And um, what are you? What are some of the predictions of the future of, of nano that uh, that you know some of the people in the room may may be excited to share that they may not know? So I, I think you're right. It is hard. Um, I'm guessing that most people didn't realize that nano is already being commercialized, um, and it's currently used in, uh, like, in clothing uh, to create um, water repellent clothes. It's used in a lot. Of, most of your sunscreen has nanoparticles. Um, it's used in solar cells. So it, it is uh, all over. I think people don't realize that. So going forward, what I would like to see is nano improving uh, treatment. Making lowering the cost of treatment for diseases and improving people's health, 
and also um, lowering the cost of renewable energy. Yeah, um, I know you know a lot of money spent on uh, putting our data in the cloud, and uh, you know it's a you know it's a fraction of the world economy. But as we put more and more stuff in the cloud, it's going to be more expensive. Does Nano uh, could Nano help on energy and help on distributing information so there's less latency? I know with augmented reality, which is like a two hundred billion dollar market, I think in the next five to ten years, do you see Nano having uh, implications for these other tangential orthogonal spaces? Yeah, I mean, I, I, just thinking about it for two seconds, I could see nanomaterials helping create uh, superconductors, for example. Um, to decrease the transmission loss and the latency. Um, people are also looking at using uh, very clever ways of using nanomaterials for non-volatile memory um, so, to, so that you don't, um, you can have a, a smaller space and use less power to store the same amount of memory. Yeah, you no, know, people um, say that the battery's holding us back in terms of a lot of uh, digital devices and I think Nano is, is gonna be a player there. I so so um, you're a hero to many, but you had a hero. Can we uh, throw uh, Millie up? Uh, we have two pictures so was, of Millie. Can you say something about how Millie inspired you and what her legacy is? She's like the, the, the godmother of Nano a little bit or? She is the queen of carbon. So Millie Dressel House, I was fortunate enough to be one of her um, advisees for my PhD thesis. Um, and so um, Millie has made amazing strides in, um, in nano, but in particular in carbon nanotubes and thermoelectrics. Um, and what I asked John to mention that to me today because just today uh, the Dressel House family announced that there's going to be a, a Dressel House prize um, awarded to a scientist uh, who's made strides in nanotechnology. Millie influenced my career in so many ways. I'd say one way is she has an, had an amazing work ethic. Yeah. Um, and she was always nice to people. And yeah. I, I think those are good lessons. So I remember, I have a lot of Millie stories, but I remember one time we were uh, at MIT and we were taking a cab over to MRS, which is a big conference just across the street at the Heinz. And um, we got in the cab, and she started chit-chatting with the taxi driver on the way over. He had no idea who she was, and um, just asking about his kids, and just she was just nice to everyone. It didn't so, matter. So I think Jeff Bezos said it was uh, Star Trek that got him thinking about uh, Alexa. Um, how well does science fiction talk about nano? Like, you know, when Batman puts on his suit, does he ever mention nano and uh, you know you may be too busy to you know, go see ant-man um uh but do, do you think uh, science fiction is is uh, representing the the power of nano well uh, uh so they actually hire scientists did you know that uh, to, I, I, to yeah. make sure the techno babble is accurate yeah um so yeah you know a, a lot of scientists engineers including myself like to listen to star trek and laugh when they make a mistake but i think in general they're they're actually not bad um yeah. they, it depends on which one. Star Trek in particular is pretty good, I think. Yeah. Um, so, and, uh, yeah. I, sorry, I yeah. think science fiction is important because it inspires people in uh, coming up with the direction of where to take, take the development. Yeah. And uh, if you could say one thing uh, to the audience and the audience that will be watching online, um, you know, to challenge people to go into nano, you know, people could go into helping to sell ads, you know, for Google and, and optimize that. But I think there's this whole exciting field that's really important. And, and do, you, do you want to say something uh, to rally uh, more people to, to be part of your uh, Team Nano? Well, I, Team Nano. I, I, I feel like it's really important that we continue to improve society for people. And in order to do that, we have to change the phys physically what's, what's happening. And Nano, um, as I mentioned earlier, is. Um, one of the most powerful ways to do that because you can um, create new materials um, out of our existing materials and really use this to improve, uh, lower the cost of energy, to improve healthcare, um, to, um, to create better batteries. Um, so I, I think it's a, a nanotechnology materials in general is a way to really make a big impact in the world. So nano is a Greek word, is that right? Or, or I have you're in, you're no in a, idea. Because I know femto is trillion. Oh, nano is, is 10 to the minus 9. Yeah, years. so you know the math. 
Is there something after nano that's like, what, oh, what's, yeah. what's the word after nano? Pico. Pico. So do you do Pico or, or that's, or or you're, you're, you're not interested in Pico and Femto? You stop um, at nano. So once you get much smaller, you get to the size of an atom, and that really gets into more like fundamental physics that are looking at you know, the bosons and the... Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah. So when you go to a conference and there are femto people and pico people, do you guys like, uh, do you get along like the oboist and the... You don't even the, go to uh, the same conferences. Flute? Yeah, you don't go yeah, to the same conferences. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to thank you because you are very technical and you could talk you know, way over a lot of average people's heads, and I feel like you're making this so accessible. Uh, wish you the best, and uh, I think you're a hero in the tech space. Keep up uh, the yeah, great thanks, work, and thank for you for representing. Me. I appreciate it.